Good evening. I am Epstein of Linden Associates with your Spider ETF wrap up, and this is for the end of the month, September 30th, 2020, the end of the quarter, too, I guess. We still have the week to go. Now, it's going to be an interesting day tomorrow. Let me explain what I mean by that. We have plenty of economic data. Uh, I covered that already for my subscribers. They've already seen all the data that's coming out tomorrow. But the event that we all have to be looking at is how do we wake up in the morning? Do we have a trade deal? Not, and I, I said trade, really not a trade, a COVID-19 relief package or not. As I see it, Ms. Pelosi, Speaker of the House, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin, who seems to be now heading things up, the two have gotten to the point where either going to get a deal or not get a deal. Why? The House had said it was going to vote today on their version of the deal. Apparently, a 90-minute talk between Ms. Pelosi and Mr. Mnuchin got that to be delayed to tomorrow as the two sides have to huddle with what they can get through from their prospective parties. The differences seem to be the size of the package, be it 2.2 trillion the Democrats want, 1.3 trillion the Republicans want. Aid package for cities and states from the Democratic side that the Republicans have opposed. And for the Republicans, giving protection to businesses where COVID workers go back there and they get ill. We've been seeing that with JBS and the meatpacking companies and so on. They don't want that to be able to happen. If we can reach agreement with all that, you get a deal and that deal carries us through the election into whenever. Going to be interesting. I've thought that a deal would happen. I haven't changed my opinion. I've been one of them saying that. I still am. I'm still a guy that thinks Brexit may happen at the very last minute with something positive. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. So instead of looking at each thing there, let's go right to the charts. The important thing is the chartist, you filled in the XLK, a gap and the market stopped going down. So here's your bounce in the market. We're getting that first wave. You've got a pattern of higher lows on the swing line and higher highs, the definition of an uptrend. Where's the filter? The 18-day moving average of closes is the filter on the swing line as I teach in my charting course. And you go to our website under the word education, all the info on the charting course is there. It's six hours of videos and folks, super cheap. Market's over. So I've got the swing line up. I've got, as I call it now, the bias is to the upside. So everything there is filtered bullish. You can see the Bollinger Band is right here. That's where I think your first serious resistance is. 118.33 and momentum is overbought. So even if you get this deal, I'm just saying, be careful. You've got a resistance point right over the market. Support is back at the 18 day average and you'd have to get under 109, let's call that 49, in order to turn me to the point where I go, wow, that, that whole pattern failed. When I look at SMH, today was the day where I think the pros came out of the market. The first time you hit a Bollinger Band is what I teach in my charting course that you come out with. Your pattern has been bullish, you've been over the 18 day average, you're overbought and you got to that number. Does that mean the markets can't go further? That's not what it's about. The high probability trade is when you hit these numbers to be coming out of them. Now, you could keep part of the position, you can keep a tight stop. I'm not guiding your trading, I'm telling you what I see. When you look at XLI, this turned bearish today. You've got lower highs, lower lows. You had an outside day down, and the high of today was lower than the previous day. So I think the bears have grabbed control of this market. I think they'll be protecting it at 77.38 unless there's a deal announced first thing in the morning before the market's open. After that, I, st I think that their orders will be in place. Where would they want out? I would think 78.40. Take out today's high, and I think you don't want any part of being short. You might be going back to the upper Bollinger Band. In XLE, the trend is still down. Now, the energy sector is hurt because COVID cases are popping up all through Europe. Very serious situation. Even Wales is now uh, going to be the new lockdown area, potentially. In the U.S., we have 21 states. Uh, we're just entering fall. Who knows what's really going to happen here? And they're worried. Air travel cruise travel, driving cars, that all comes to a halt. So the demand for energy is going to be slower. And you see that in this chart. It's still dropping away on you. 
bears are still fully in control of this market. QQQ, market is getting overbought. Again, I'm going to repeat, get a deal. Maybe you can make that run up to 283 or higher. Uh, and that's where I think the smart money is looking with orders to take some parts of their positions off. Trend up, bias up, momentum up, but overbought. Do I think on pullbacks you'll get aggressive buying at the 18-day average now? Not in an overbought condition. In EFA, the emerging markets, get over 64.23, and you can get a pop in this market. That could be important because it's right near that 18-day average. That 18-day average is likely to fall a bit tomorrow. And when it, if, it, if I'm right on that and you did that, maybe you got 66.08 as a potential target zone. I don't know. Then we look at GLD. I'm just going to let that ring. Lower highs, lower lows, still a bearish pattern, but an oversold market. When we go to the gold miners, lower highs, lower lows, the 100-day average. I normally turn that phone off. I forgot. Uh, this is where the support comes in, right through here. As I told you, I think the pros, the big traders that are looking for the longer term, started buying right here at the 100 day. They're not trend traders the way that I'm talking. I think they began their purchases, they're waiting on the 200 day if they can get even more because so many of us are still looking at one thing. We think that if the, if the world can find a COVID cure, that everything else gets taken care of. The next big play is the commodity play. That seems to be firm, bank after bank and so on. That's what I think is going on. Look for the 4058 level. In TLT, you've got lower highs, lower lows. You went right to the Bollinger Band and magically the market stopped. You're still caught very much in this sideways action. Why did it drop today? Well, I think that the market's starting to build in that there's going to be a COVID-19 relief package. And if they get a COVID relief package, well, that's not going to drive interest rates lower. That puts a pressure on the economy, good pressure, because all the economics been there. I can understand that. Now, where do you go with it? And remember, to, to be betting that that's going to keep falling, you're betting against the Fed. I'm not joining that camp. When you look at FXE, you've still got a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. Now, a warning to the bears would be taking out today's high. When you have an outside day down, if you take out the high of that iris trade rule, is the market's caught a group of shorts and the market wants to go to the closest main moving average or Bollinger Band, the closest of, that would be the 18. Don't take it out. No reason you can't be going back to 109.39, but there's divergence on this chart. You've got momentum pointing up. You got the trend down. I hate divergence. You know, I each afternoon at about 4 o'clock, I review not only these. I, it's about 36 charts that I'm now reviewing. I put out a lot of buy here, sell there recommendations. That's what it's about. Instead of writing newsletters, this is so much easier. It's a picture. It's right there. We're reviewing. We're talking about the market, what I'm seeing. And before I start even these videos, the very beginning starts off in each one. What are the reports due out for the next day? What's the estimates? Where are they? As I said, I'm up to 36 charts, I believe, right now. The technical analysis tied to the fundamentals for the next day. And as I said, chart after chart, with more studies than you're seeing here. You're seeing what I call the light version of what I do. The charts will look more like this. There's only five studies, but they tie right into my charting course. They cover all of this that you're seeing, and we really cover a lot of ground for you. The online stocks I've added, the bets, that's all there. So how do you get this? Well, it's pretty darn inexpensive. $8.95 for 30 days. Decide if you like it. If you like it after that, $16. Some people, and a lot of them now, are tying what we call a combo package, where they get my morning subscriber video on the futures, since it ties right into all these ETFs. And they get that, at, it, it, I record at 540 in the morning, so they have it by 630 before you ever open up these ETFs. Now what do they do? Now they got a real game plan they're working back and forth with because the DIA, SPY, they're all tied together. Go to find out more, www.irapstein.com under the word research. I'm Ira, good trading to you, and I'll see you tomorrow.